appreciate. I'm sure you understand just what I mean. Everybody everywhere is calling for her now. I'm speaking of the new Ford, and boy, it's sure a wow. Lay off people, lay off folks, none of your sarcastic jokes. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. Not a rattle, not a bit. Lizzie now has lots of it. Henry's made a lady out of Lizzie. There's everything inside her now except a kitchen sink, a mirror, and a powder puff, a shower. Um, so our next presenter is Dave Nolting. Um, he's going from Ohio. He's going to talk about transmission drums, specifically the drums that he makes. Um, and uh, he's going to explain why you should make offers on these drums he has donated here. Um, how's that? Is that enough of an introduction? <laughs> okay. Uh, like Chris said, I'm Dave Nolting. And... Um, I make the tra reproduction transmission drums. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have them or have seen them other places. The drums that I've given here, uh, I have a wide brake, 26, 27 brake drum. If you want to narrow, I'm out of stock on that right now. I could have them in two, three weeks. So, but if that's what you want, that's what you can have. You can do either way. I don't care. Um, like Chris said, you, um, you uh, send me your... Uh, cores. I'll take your gears out, clean them up, put them in, take care of the final machining, ship them to you. Um, I'm getting nothing out of that other than what you pay here today. Uh, you don't pay any more. And uh, that all goes to the, this program. Okay. Okay. The uh, narrow set would retail for 875, the wide for 900. That's with gears installed. Uh, your, your gears. Um, new gears is another story that they're they're more expensive and I don't have uh, I don't have the low speed I don't have any low speed gears in my gear manufacturer went out of business I've got some new low gears in process I'd hope to have them by the first of March I don't know we'll see I don't think we're gonna make that but uh, I think we're actually gonna have better gears uh, I think I'm gonna be happier with them um, I constantly fought quality issues with uh, the last fella and uh, sent a lot back to him. I still have some reverse gears and the brake hubs are not a problem. So with that, I'm going up here. You'll see a billet of um, ductile iron um, that is cast as a bar. Originally, I started out having the drums cast individually. The problem was that the foundries didn't want to deal with me. I was a small guy. There were no small foundries in the area. Uh, I was having to wait three, four months to get rough castings. This I can call order today and pick it up in about a week. It comes in a bar. They cut it to length for me. Um, as far as machining, it's much nicer. The OD of the blank has the scale from the casting that's hard and you have to get through and tears up tooling that full cast drum was all covered with scale so to machine it you went through a lot more tooling and then we had knit lines where they would pour that casting and it would come together and sometimes you would have a place where it wasn't um you know there was a knit line where it just come together and, and that wasn't good i had some bad castings i had a friend suggest i go to this and it's been a, a great way to go. It's the same material, other than this is probably a little better mix. Currently, I do not have a CNC lathe. I could machine them on my manual machine, but you would rather me send them to a CNC shop, and I buy a drum like this. I buy the blank. It's turned, and then I finish it, and we'll go through, and I'll show you how we do that. Uh, that's a low-speed drum. <clears throat> You can tell it takes a technician with years of experience. Anyway, I'm just going to walk you through a set of drums that came in a week or two ago. I think it was last week I did these. Um, fellow down in Arkansas sent me these. He didn't have a puller to get the drive gear off. Typically, they come in without that. 
But if you can't get that off, that's not a problem. Send it to me. I'll take that off for you and put it back together. Uh, it, it doesn't take long. Don't laugh at my puller. That was a scrap material in the shop. And yes, that top piece has never bent. After we get them separated, I have a set of fixtures that I take them apart and put them together with. We set that up on a mill and we go in and we center drill another man with years of experience. He's 11 and he's been, he's been drilling rivets and pressing rivets for two, three years. Oh my goodness. So we drill the rivets out until they look like that. Nothing fancy. And then he sets them on a steel plate, hold the punch with pliers, take a hammer and just hit them as hard as you can. Just knock that rivet out. Um, sometimes we have a problem drilling the rivet because it's so loose, it spins. If it spins, you can put a punch on it usually and just drive it out anyway. And yes, he should have safety glasses. I caught him and we got that corrected. On the brake hub only, after they're separated, I put them back on the mill and I go in and I re-countersink those holes. Uh, I'm telling you this because this is something that there's no reason why you can't do this at home. I'll do it for you, but you can do it at home. I kind of sink the holes because some of those, when you take that rivet out, there's hardly any countersink there at all. The rivet is plenty long. I put a nice countersink in there. This is the gears and the hub as they come out. You can see they're pretty dirty, greasy, nasty looking. Sometimes they've got a little rust. Sometimes they've got caked on um, grease. Uh, so from here, we wash them in a wash tank. They come back looking better but not as nice as we'd want. So I sandblast them, bead blast, actually. It's, a, it's a, uh, glass beads, and it works fantastic. The dried on grease and such, I don't worry about that. It comes off, the people that sell me that stuff, it's scat blast is what I use. They say, you can't do that. I've never had a plug up, I've never had a problem. But after you're done blasting it, they gotta go back into the wash tank, and on the low speed, which is the second one, you can see the bushing is down inside. I take a hook scribe in the wash tank, I run fluid in there, and I take that scribe around, and I pick out, make sure I get all that sand and glass bead out of there, and take a wire brush and do the same. And between the two bushings, on your brake hub, there's two bushings, there's one on each end. Get in between those and really make sure they're clean, and if I send you a set of drums, I would recommend you go through and clean them again. I mean, you just can't be clean enough with this. You don't want that in your engine and transmission. I talked briefly, I mentioned briefly, I had fixtures that I uh, take them apart with and I put them together with. This is the fixtures. Each one of these, um, there's a big washer and a nut then that goes on top. And as we go on, you'll see those in use. That's the drum. Uh, the brake drum, um, it's bolted into the fixture, um, ready to set the rivets. I use a Harbor Freight press. Uh, we're looking to go to something different here in the future, but right now I use a Harbor Freight press, um, and I do one rivet at a time. You can see there I've set seven of the rivets. See what a nice head that forms. And the last one back there, you can see I'm getting ready to, I'll talk a little more about this, uh, about the process of setting those in a minute. There they are finished up. After I take that off the fixture, there are some measurements on each of these. Well, not the reverse, but on the brake, even though that's an original hub, I always measure from this point down to the granite block. and. Um, there's a dimension there you want to hold. If you've got an old one and it's worn uh, from those thrust washers, it's okay. That can be a little loose. You can put extra thrust washer in there. You don't want it too tight. Most anything on a Model T is better loose than too tight. Too tight is going to give you trouble. But a lot of them are already oversized, even though it's an original part and it's been in a car for years. I can still go in and skin that and take a little off and bring it back into spec. Um, this one was not, it was right on spec, and uh, I just take a light cut there to clean up. Another measurement, we turn it around and we measure from the end of the shaft down. 
I have made the the drums a little bit long there so that I always have a little material that I can take off. So I measure it and you have rivet heads there, you have to machine that surface anyway. So I measure that, I write it on because I've got a short memory and I, um, from there we go to the lathe. Oh, no we don't. Should do this before this, this set of gears that this man had looked like brand new. But if there's any question at all, I always measure up here where the driven gear goes and make sure that it's still in spec. I've had those come in, it looks like a decent part, but they've had that gear on and off a couple of times and it's worn. And if you if that driven gear doesn't press on tight, you don't want it because it's going to start to work on there and you'll crack at those keyways down through. I've had two or three of those come through the shop. It's not often, but um, you can have that brake hub crack. Then we go to the lathe. I put them in a four jaw chuck. I get the um, hub running true. The gears fit on each, and the, the hub, the, the drums fit on the gear and the hub. Each one a little different. There's a tolerance on both. Some of them they slide in. Some of them you have to tap them in. But uh, they pretty much center themselves. So we make sure that they're running concentric there. Then I put an indicator on the face and make sure that we're running true. That we're not running cockeyed, okay? We get that within a couple of thousands and, and don't worry about it because we're gonna machine those surfaces anyway. Um, on a brake drum, I machine the backside where you saw that measurement, the rivet heads. Uh, I come in and um, I take the rivet heads off and then I measure from the face of the drum back. And then we cut out here where the um, uh, driven plate goes on, so that all runs true and is the right distance. I also go in and I just take a just a skin cut off the clutch pads so that they're all sitting. So everything in there is, is, is flat. There's the top side of a finished assembly and there's the bottom side. You notice those bushings are still in there, that's up to you. If you want to leave your bushings in, that's fine. Uh, if you want them taken out, I can take them out. Um, this one was an earlier set of drums and it had the bronze thrust washer. That has to come off because it covers about half of the rivet. One thing I forgot to tell you, on each of the drums before I put them together, I take a stone and I stone the surface, the mating surface of the gear and the drum. Um, especially on the um, gears, you'll find some burrs sometimes, and you don't want anything to run. You want every opportunity to make that thing run true. Same thing, you just put the rivets in it. Um, the rivets you normally have to tap in and put it back in the press and set them. I set the rivets cold. If you heat the end of the rivet or the whole rivet, I've had guys argue this with me, you heat that whole rivet, you shove it in that cold steel, the first thing it does is it cools the shank or you heat the top, all you do is form a head. You don't want to do that. You want to compress that rivet. You want to swell that rivet in the hole. More than holding the two pieces together, you want to take the rotational forces. Now, Mike and I do this differently. I've, I've done what Mike does. He takes a small hammer and he puts them in a mandrel of some sort, I'm not sure, very similar. And he goes around and he taps those down. You don't take it and hit that as hard as you can. You tap them down. You, you, uh, how long do you take, Mike? The rivets are soft. But the same thing, you want to swell that rivet. Now, I've told Mike, I've done that and it works very well. Uh, I spent one whole Saturday just playing with rivets to see what worked. I've used um, air chisel where I cut the chisel off and used it as an impact driver. Again, cut your pressure way back and don't let that thing get away from you. It'll make a nice looking drum look ugly. Uh, I had a fella, and I don't remember who it was. So I always did mine in a press. 
you can watch that rivet start to swell and all of a sudden the head just collapses. Um, it fills that void. And on the brake, I've adjusted my pressure until I can just see in a later brake hub, there's a chamfer cut on it. And I'll just see it just start to bulge that a little bit. So I have filled that hole as, I mean, they're, they're, they're tight. And if your brake hub, especially they're soft, if they are a little worn, if you set them like Mike does or like I do, it is amazing how much you can swell that rivet shank and fill up that hole. I, I used to buy oversized rivets and I don't do that anymore. There's no need. You can see there on the gauge, uh, I think it's about five tons uh, that I was using. I've backed that off a little bit, um, but I put quite a hurting on them and I will not, I will not remount your original gears, original drums. Um, I've had guys ask me that. I do it this way. Um, I'll crack the original drums, but you can do that. I, I know Mike does. If you've got a good gear and a good drum, you can swap them. You can put them together. Just take your time. On the low speed, uh, again, I machine this surface that you see standing up there. Those heads will sit a little proud on the rivet. I measure that record the, the uh, amount I need to take off. On the front side, the gear side, uh, we just go in and skin that off clean. I say we, it's me. And back to the lathe, again, make sure it's running concentric. Now, I put an indicator down, it's hard to see it down here on the um, gear face. And a lot of times it'll be out just a little bit. My dad gave me that screwdriver 20 years ago. Great big old square shank screwdriver, a good one, made in America. I always leave a little gap between the face of the lathe and that gear, and I slide that in, and I got a little tiny leather mallet, and I just tap it. And you can watch that indicator, and you can true them up and get them within a thousandth or a half, and, and you're pretty good shape. At that point, I go in and I machine the back side, and turn around and do the front side, and take a picture of that, and there's your finished low speed, both sides. And you can see that all I've done is just skin those heads off and take a piece of emery cloth and, and polish that. That's a finished reverse drum. I didn't show you putting it together because the process is exactly like the low speed, except you don't have to machine the opposite side. It sets out towards your flywheel. There's nothing up there to interfere with those rivet heads. Ford didn't machine them, and I don't try to get back in there. It would be a difficult job. Uh, you don't need to do that, okay? Um, but putting it in the, you know, the press, the lathe, everything is exactly the same. And since he sent it to me as an assembly, I pressed his gear back on and for an old set of gears, that's a pretty nice looking stack. It really is. His bushings were good. Everything there was nice. Questions? Um, what I tell most people is measure your existing and cut it back to that but I can provide those dimensions. It, it kind of surprised most people. A lot of those dimensions are kind of open. They'll be plus or minus five, easy, at least, yeah. Some less, some more, it just depends. Um, the biggest thing on a Model T transmission is don't make it too tight. Uh, that is of my opinion. And timing marks, no. The timing marks are on the triples, but not on the drum gears. There's no timing mark on those. Yeah. My question is related to as you're proceeding around the riveting of, of your rivets, mm -hmm. do you, like with lug nuts on a wheel, do you crisscross yes, or I do you do. go just in a circular pattern? That's in my notes reference? that I forgot to read. Uh, <laughs> yes, I do. Uh, when I start on those, I'll go, you know, one rivet, and then I go 180, and then I'll go 90, 180, and then across, and, and, and I, I absolutely do. I absolutely do. Okay, in addition to the uh, drums, you're ma also making the uh, new tail shafts, uh, and my question is, uh, you have not yet, at least as far as I know, made any of the... Uh, shafts that mount to the uh, driven plate that the ball cap mounts to. Do you have any plans on doing any of those? 
I am not. Uh, the main shaft, I'll be honest, that the drim that bolts up to your crankshaft and flywheel that these run on, I don't make those. There's a company in uh, Pennsylvania, uh, a beautiful machine shop. This gentleman made these for his dad. He, he, what he told me was I, I, I did this because I had to get dad and his buddies to you know, let me get in there and make a living. So he makes those. Uh, they're forged. I didn't bring one. I should have. If you haven't seen them, they're an absolutely beautiful piece of work. Um, if you're rebuilding an engine, if you have a new crank, or if you have your crank ground, have them kiss off the uh, flange on the back, and you put this to it, uh, things will go together a lot simpler for you. They're just a wonderful piece of work. Um, the output shaft, where your universal joint goes in, and the um, uh, clutch plate or that driven plate. I at one point was going to do that. Since I've retired, I, I don't have a desire. But last year at Chickasha, I ran into a young man, beautiful family, come up and started talking to me about it. And as we talked a few minutes, I realized he's a pretty sharp cookie. Found out he runs his own machine shop. And he made and his Model T. And he made comment that, uh, uh, you know, dead of winter, he doesn't have as much repair work. And he says, I, I could use something like that. I said, why don't you make them? So I gave him the drawings. And I talked with him. I've talked with him several times. Uh, just a really nice young man, uh, Daniel Bennett. I probably shouldn't mention his name. But anyway, he, he has told me he hopes to have a prototype for me to see at Chickasha. Um, he's having a pattern made. And there's, they tell me there's need of that part in the hobby. I see people wanting them. It's not going to be a cheap part. When you stop and think about it, uh, he's, he's got a, having a pattern made. He told me what that pattern was going to cost me, and it just blew me away. He has the fingers. He has the output shaft with that square hole. Um, if this... If he sells them, if, if people buy them, he's looking at buying special equipment to do that. Um, he's investing quite a bit in these. I'm not sure where his price is going to be. He told me where he thought, but he's not sure yet. But I hope that's something that you'll support. Um, because if we don't support that, then in 10 years, there won't be anybody that wants to do it, and we won't have them. Another item, and I didn't have, a, I didn't have this until just... A day or so ago, I have another friend. He's a Model T guy. I led him down that path of wrong, and we worked together. Uh, I, I left, I retired, and left him to work. But here's the clutch basket. This is the first one. It's a prototype. He has a couple little changes he wants to make, but it's a. <laughs> Brian does a beautiful, beautiful job. He's an incredible machinist, and uh, these are going to be available very soon. And I don't know, I, I told him I'd put them on my bench, and then the same with that uh, output shaft that you were talking about. Uh, I'll have them, and I'm sure that the makers will, will sell them also. Any other questions? Hearing none, thank you, Dave, very much. Thank you. Like 80's Irish Rose, Henry's maid lady, Aunt Lizzie. The Chevrolet said with regret, to the whippet, we're both wet. Henry's maid lady, out of Lizzie. The Packard shouted to the moon.